You are listening to Living the Clover Life. It's our silver episode number 25, yes. and I'm here with Mr. John Kiefer, business manager at St. Malachi, who is always the gold standard of business right? managers. Oh, yes. so, <laughs> welcome, John. <laughs> we are talking everything generous in clover today. So I'm Father Sean Danda. I am John Kiefer. And welcome back to Living the Clover Life. Let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that every good thing comes from you, that you are the great giver who gives so much to each one of us. Continue to share your love, your grace, your strength, your forgiveness, your mercy, your kindness, everything into our minds and hearts today. Renew us and renew the whole world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, in a lot of ways, when you think about living the clover life, whether it's confession, Our Lady, uh, life, Eucharist, vocations, revealed word, all these principles, a generous heart is the one that, that wants to go to the Lord for mercy. A generous heart is the one that, that, that loves Our Lady and wants to love Jesus the way that she did. A generous heart is the one that wants to give everything in the vocation, the calling that God has for your life. All of this is what cl living the clover life is about, is about being a person of generosity. And you, John, you help us in so many ways to live that generous life, talk about generosity in the, in the parish as well. And so maybe to begin our conversations, we could like hit that biblical level, you know, the, sure. the big biblical term that none of us really understand today is stewardship cringy words sometimes Catholics hear they hear stewardship and all of a sudden they say oh the church is going to ask me for some money right? money some money money money, money. Yes. give me your money <laughs> right sure. that's not the whole that's not the whole uh the whole pie though so stewardship if we're looking for real definition it's going to be the time talent and treasure yes. um that you provide back to God if we're looking back and me and father talk about this time and time again about being the steward right like what mm -hmm. is the steward like we're looking in terms of medieval times right the king well or yeah medieval times i mean it's it's kind of lost in our modern world because even even in jesus's time in the ancient world the landowner the master he just didn't have time to take care of everything so he had stewards he had servants that he really trusted who would take care of everything for him and jesus will tell parables a little bit about this how the steward who took care of making sure people were paid and everything was was brought into the house and the goods were taken care of but then you have the bad steward who doesn't do what he's supposed to do and he just uses the master's house for himself and he eats drinks and is merry and the master is going to come back and be really angry at that steward for for not taking care of his things for not using them the way that the the master wanted them to be used and it's really that kind of gift mentality that you don't own these things, but you use them as though they're your very own, but you also recognize that they're from God, and therefore you want to use them the way that God wanted you to use them in the first place. It's good imagery there, and I like to think of me personally. I have a friend, right? And and I, my friend asks me to come to his house. Mm -hmm. um, I'm leaving town. Can can you watch my house? Um, you know, uh, I, I've, I've left some finances there for you. Um, you're obviously in charge of my tangible sure. things that I have. The house you have sitter. my car, right? You're the house <laughs> sitter, right? And so if he leaves and I have two choices, I can one, either try to maintain or dare I say, improve the things that he has, or does he leave? And when he comes back, I've thrown a massive party. I accidentally wrecked his car. <laughs> I used it. I maxed right. out his credit cards. Now he's going to come back and um, hopefully he'll still be my friend, right? right? But to say at least, he's not going to be very happy with me. Yeah. He's not, he's not going to think I used it very responsibly. But And you think about the gravity. Of really, I mean, if you really think about the gravity of yourself as a steward, right? So what we have in terms of our money, our gifts, our yeah. skills, which allow us to um, have talents, yeah. to have treasure, to have time. So if we really think about this, all these things are not ours. No. They are not ours. 
Gifts from um, God. Gifts from God. Absolutely. Yeah, you didn't have to be born into the family you were born into, the time, the place, to have the opportunities that you you have. All of that is gift from God. The, so how are we going to spend? How do, how are you going to responsibly use it to better those around you and the world that we live in? Or to not complain that well they have more. Right. They they had a better upbringing. They had better opportunities than me. And my I mean this is the classic. The master gives t- uh, five talents to this person, two talents to this person, and one talent to that last one. And the last one who says, I got one talent, you know, I don't have as much as the one with five. I'm just going to go bury it and complain about how I didn't have as much as he had. That's obviously not what good stewardship's about. The master was angry in Jesus's parable that he didn't use at least the little bit that he had and put it in the bank and drew some interest on on that that loan the last shall be first the first mm-hmm. shall be last right mm-hmm. so you can't necessarily hang up what you do or what you don't have in our humanness right it's about what you do with the things that you yeah. do have and that's where people get angry at god because oh god doesn't give equally he gives at different levels to each one of us but he does expect us all to share. There's no gift that God gives us that wasn't meant to be shared uh, with others. And that's why he gives everything to us, that we might share it with others and make an impression of love and goodness on others. And when you first think about what you have, and if you kind of realize that it's from God, and why did God give it to me? Well, it's because he loves me, and he sees me as very precious and wonderful, and he knows that I could share so well with the things he gives me. Well, the first place that should draw us to is a heart of gratitude, Yep. right? Absolutely. And, and what do we call the Mass? We call it the Eucharist, and that's a Greek word, which means thanksgiving. So really, the central thing about being a Christian is about being a person of gratitude and thanksgiving and attitude having that attitude of gratitude as they say uh if you want to silence complaining lips well think of something to be grateful for that's always a great strategy if you're you're tempted to complain about something think of uh, something to be thankful for thankful heart silences complaining lips yeah couldn't agree more Never ceases to amaze me that how uh, in our in our humanness and just in, in being here in this in the secular world that we're not in heaven yet, right? Mm-hmm. Is that it's it's such an easy tendency to go to the negative part of the mind, sure. like why why is this unfair? I don't have these things. This person has this person, but they're awful. Why did God allow them to have this, right? And as you said, in terms of uh, being grateful, can stop your complaining lips is that gratefulness definitely begets happiness. Oh, yeah. Right? I remember somebody telling me that um, looking at, I think they did a study in terms of children around the world, in terms of their their happiness. Maybe we won't be surprised as Americans, but some of the people, uh, children that were the least happy were American children, right? Mm -hmm. Who have everything. Who have everything, right? Mm -hmm. So many more advantages than a lot of other children around the globe. As opposed to third world (laughs) kids. I think that they found the happiest children were those children in Haiti who Mm -hmm. have absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. But I think you make that connection between they don't have a lot, but they're really grateful for what they do have, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and, and generous people tend to be the happiest people I know. You want to get something done, ask a busy person (laughs) because they're busy. People are like generous people. They're busy because they're trying to do things for other people, whether it's their their kids, their spouse, their friends, their community. Uh, They're just constantly involved. And and those are usually the happiest people I know. Those are the people I like to be around. Those are the people I like to ask to help me out. Uh, They're the people I know I can rely upon. You know, gratefulness and gratitude help manage personal tragedy, medical Mm, conditions, financial troubles. I mean, if you're always trying to maintain that focus on what I do have and the realization that God loves me, um, he's provided me with all these blessings and I'm going to focus on that rather than the, the, why, why is it this way? Yeah. Um, Why don't you tell us a little bit about that in your personal life? Because you have some brain uh, surgeries every couple of years. You've got quite the many blessings in your children and right. wife. And so everybody has their own story. Mm-hmm. Right. And so uh, mine was that I started getting major surgeries when I was 14 years old. I'll try to keep it, keeping the cliff note virgin. Sure. But 
so through about I'm turning 40 this year. You turned 40 this I, year. Yes, I We're did. We're going to be old men. <laughs> uh, but I've now had nine major surgeries, four brain surgeries, five kidney surgeries. And so any one of those crosses in the road, you can make a choice. Am I going to stick in the shadows and let this be a reason as to why I'm not grateful? I'm going to I'm going to hit the stop sign. Uh, right. I'm going to be depressed. Right. Woe is me. I have to have all right. these surgeries, you know, wife and kids serve me. Right. Think of me because poor me. Right. And then so other people also have it much more worse than this. Like people that got diagnosed with stage four cancer. I mean, how severe and how tragic is that? You can't let that stop you. If you focus on the positiveness, you know, here I, I have a beautiful wife. I have seven beautiful children. Right. I don't live in the nicest house, but I have everything I could possibly need. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm able to give. I have great friends. And it's so that these little understandings or acknowledgments about the gifts that you have, um, as opposed to, again, sitting there in despair about the things that have gone wrong or the things that you don't have. Taking them to things, doing things with them. He's volunteering at the parish along with working as the business manager. You know, he's praying. Uh, he's in, involved in so many things and giving of himself. That's the person of generosity. Right. You know God is calling you to be. Right. And it's I won't say it's that's easy either. It's almost an no. intentional mindset. Not when you have seven kids. No. <laughs> and they all need something. <laughs> 5 30 to 11 at night, every day, the next 20 years of my life, right? And I love it. That's great. Yeah. It's great. You know, it's, it's a busy, busy lifestyle, but I would not change it for the world. But I also want to acknowledge that sometimes I'm also blessed in terms of uh, I'm not a depressive person, really. No. You know, I don't get, you know, everybody has stress, but I'm not an overly anxious person. Yeah. But I also tie that too in the constant uh, repetition of, being a positive person, <laughs> being grateful for what I have. I've, I've seen, been in too many hospitals and, you know, I, I always tell this and anybody getting any medical condition is like half the battle is just your mental mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, are you going into something thinking like, oh, that's going to be awful. Uh, or we... do you believe that God is with you? Absolutely. And, and God's yeah. got this and he's going to give you exactly what you need. So, you know, this is one of those misunderstandings about generosity, that if I give too much, I'm not going to have enough, that I'm not going to be taken care of. I'm not going to have uh, all that I need. But the reality is you can't outgive God. You can't. I, I mean, honestly, we just don't own anything to begin with. So you, you can't but only give it back to God ultimately. And he keeps giving to you every second that you're drawing in breath is a gift from God and, and everything that you think that you have and possess is a gift from God. And so you can't outgive him. He's always going to give you more uh, in every every moment. So we, we got to break that mentality that, well, if I if I give, I might give too much and I might not have enough for me. No, God loves you so much. He's going to provide for all that you need. So I've been at the church for 10 years now. Prior to being employed at the church, I was uh, working at an accounting firm. And I know Father's seen it, but the, always the constant mindset of whether it was clients at the accounting firm or even, you know, some parishioners that I've seen is that uh, I got to be, and you do have to be a little bit strategic in terms of your of your giving, of your time, your talent, uh, and, and your finances as well. But some, some people tend to maybe overly hold on to stuff. You know, I've seen millionaires doing their tax returns and they were so concerned about the what what ifs mm -hmm. that it restricted them to giving hardly anything, yeah. right? Yeah, there's that mentality that, you know, do, do you possess your possessions or do your possessions right. possess you and dictate, you know, what what you're going to do with them? Yeah. Well, and I want to say it's this I understand, I understand the fear cuz uh, people always go to and again, it's uh, that's an unfortunate humanness. They go to that what if negative situation, sure. right? Well, and the devil always wants to get us to rationalize things. That's what he did with Eve. Uh, you remember when he said, if look at the fruit, it, it's, it's good for knowledge. It's, it's looks good. Nothing's going to happen to you. Right. And so she takes it. She rationalizes that, well, this is actually going to make me a better person. <laughs> well, no, it's not because it was against what God was asking her to do with his creation and, and we all get sucked into that trap of trying to over-rationalize, well, this is just me being responsible. Well, yes, we want to be responsible, but we also want to do God's will. We want to 
focus our eyes on Jesus and not on ourselves or the things that we have. It's, it's again, the classic story of Jesus in the boat uh, in the storm happening. When they look at the storm, they're afraid. They need to keep their eyes fixed on Jesus. Jesus is in the boat. He's going to take care of the storm. You don't have to be afraid. No. Oh, you know, I can sit here right now and I know, I know like next summer, I'm probably going to have to have kidney surgery again. Mm -hmm. Now I could look at that and start feeling petrified about, oh, I got to have all these things in place for when I go and get surgery Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the finances got to be done. I got to have, you know what? And I just don't. Right. Right. Because right. God's going to take care of it. Absolutely. You know, and Absolutely. we'll we'll take care of each other. You're right. Exactly. Now, you mentioned early on how some of the happiest kids are the kids in Haiti. Yep. And I think this is a great uh, thing to, to talk about because at every parish, of course, there's opportunities for stewardship, for generosity. Uh, there are ministries and outreaches that we can get involved in. And not only that, but supporting the, the financial endeavors of the parish. But also at some parishes like St. Malachi, we have missions with other parishes. And so St. Malachi for since like 1997 has had a parish mission to Haiti, St. Marguerite Parish in Haiti, and it has bore some beautiful, wonderful fruit. Yeah. So, I mean, this the, the Haiti mission really encompasses stewardship uh, in all three phases. Uh, it takes definitely financial resources as everyone knows, Haiti, you can't probably throw enough financial help at Haiti. And in terms of their needs, it takes definite time in terms of, uh, the volunteers and the leadership of the Haiti mission in terms of coordinating, planning, executing, they go down there for trips. They take down very talented people, uh, doctors, uh, they put in wells, they take down dentists. And so in terms of, and all for just the sake of helping our human man, right? Um, so I think in, in Haiti, back in 97, if um, and not a lot of parishioners know about the Haiti mission. Um, it's been one of those things that's been around forever. So if you've been at our parish forever, you know about it. But if you're new, right. it can kind of be a little bit lost upon you. Yep. Um, and so tell us a little bit, what are some of the things that that have we've supported with the Haiti mission? Sure. Um, so they have a school down there, uh, lots of kids. So there's uh, been going on for couple decades now the sponsor child i think as of last what was it we collected maybe in may i want to say may to where every year there's a drive to sponsor Mm -hmm. a child and everybody knows so there's these drives across other organizations right these pay the salaries for the teachers they help to get the kids a meal that day i mean some of those kids they that's the only meal they'll eat right is when they go to school and get that meal that day like you said, we, we've put in wells. What in about wells? the clinic? Yeah, medical clinic. You're talking about the St. Malachi Medical Clinic. I know. They St. named St. it after us. Right, right. <laughs> and I think it just corresponds to uh, how grateful yeah. they are in terms of the, the congregation of St. Malachi, their help. So the medical center has grown. I think uh, they maybe started off with one doctor. I think from my last mm-hmm. meeting, they have three now. They have dentists there. They have nurses. They have midwives. Yeah, they brought in a, a group of nuns from Cuba, I believe. Uh, who work there as well. And, and it just, it's been become one of the best and well-known uh, clinics in uh, Haiti. It just shows like the beauty of stewardship and, and generosity that something that was nothing, there was nothing there at that parish before. And just over a decade, close yeah, to 20, two, 25, 30 years. Yeah. It's, it's thriving. It's thriving. It's like a beacon. It changed. Yeah. It's changing people's lives. Uh, and that's beautiful. That's wonderful. You know, hopefully something that encourages us to get involved and to, to want to make a difference, to share with others, to give people an opportunity at a, a better life and, and those sorts of things. But not just that, but because God asks of it from us. God's generous with us, not so that we would just have things for ourselves, but so that we would share things with others. And maybe that's why God gives things unequally. So that we actually have an opportunity to share with others. Because if we all had the same amount, then there'd be no need to share. You just have your portion. I have my portion. But when I have a little bit more than you, I can give you some of my portion. And I think God sees that as beautiful. It's a participation in himself. 
Well, and uh, I agree with you that uh, as uh, the Haiti mission exemplifies kind of what true generosity and true stewardship, how it can transform a place, transform a people. We're, we're only restricted by ourselves, really. You know, everybody internally in their head and knows their own, what are my time allocations? What can I do? What are my talents? What do I want to serve? What are my financial resources? How much can I truly support? Because we can change the world. Right. We can change the world. It's just by, are we going to allow ourselves to get out of the way and to, tr and to really delve into true stewardship? Beautiful. Well, thank you, John, for joining me today and talking to me about living the clover life with great generosity, which is what it's all about in the end. And I also want to thank our listeners for tuning in. We have well surpassed 2,500 hey. downloads. Yes. Please uh, like and subscribe uh, to our channel and share this uh, episode with family and friends. It's a great way for us to grow this podcast ministry. Tune in next time when Nathaniel Rhea and I will be talking about theology of the body. We're going to enter into a little series on that, the great teaching of Pope St. John Paul the Great. Until then, keep living the clover life. You've been listening to Living the Clover Life. For more information about St. Malachi Catholic Parish, check out our website at stmalachy.org. S-T-M-A-L-A-C-H-Y dot org.